If you're looking to give your shots more of a cinematic, organic film look, maybe you've considered shooting with diffusion filters. Well, today I'm gonna to be doing a comparison between two of the more popular diffusion filters from Tiffin, Black Satin and Black Pro Mist. Many filmmakers chase that organic look that shooting on film provides, but unfortunately it's hard to achieve that look in camera unless you're shooting on film. Whether you're shooting on a DSLR, a mirrorless, or a cinema camera, chances are your footage is going to come out pretty sharp, especially when shooting with modern day lenses. That's where diffusion filters come in. So I'm gonna show you guys an in-depth comparison between two of my personal favorite diffusion filters, Black Satin and Black Pro Mist. Always when I'm in the middle of something. What's up, JT? Joe, what's up? Dude, listen, I really need a favor. My R5 won't stop overheating. And I really need a camera to shoot my cousin's pet turtle's birthday next week. Uh-huh. So, can I borrow your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K? Dude, all you have to do is go to lensrentals.com. They're gonna have everything you need. You never told me that. Yes. I definitely did. Hmm, that's a pretty good price. See? Hey, you wouldn't happen to have any extra coupon codes, would you? Yeah. I think I can send you one of those. I'll text it to you in a minute. All right, bye. If you're like JT and you need gear in a pinch, you should check out lensrentals.com. Whether it's a camera body, lenses, a lighting kit, a gimbal, whatever it is, lensrentals.com has you covered. They have customer-friendly rental policies that make renting hassle-free. If you'd like to get 15% off your entire rental from lensrentals.com, go down to the description below, hit my affiliate link, and you can get 15% off your entire order when you enter the coupon code DRIVENFILMS15 at checkout. Now before I jump into the comparison of the filters, I wanna talk about the different types of filters you could use. Now, here you have a circular filter, which many of you may be used to. However, you can also use a standard piece of glass like this four by 5.65 glass here. This is the exact same glass, same filter as a circular. However, this is an industry standard size. You can also get these in four by four or other sizes as well. Now the way you use this glass is you place it into a matte box, whether it's a front loaded matte box or a drop in, that's how you use it. I personally use the Bright Tangerine Misfit Atom matte box. It's a two-stage matte box and it allows me to add up to two filters. I absolutely love this thing. So if you wanna see a review on that, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel because that review is coming up soon. Now, there are um, some pros and cons to each. For instance, if you are using this glass, uh, obviously these are uh, a little more fragile. If you drop it, there's a good chance you are going to break it. On the other hand, the circular filters, you could pretty much only use them on the lens that you have the filter thread for. However, you can pick up some step-up rings. I've talked about that in the past. Step-up rings have saved me multiple times. So those are a couple pros and cons. Personally, I like using the bigger glass because I could use it in my matte box. Now let's talk about what you can expect when shooting with diffusion filters. When shooting with either black pro mist or black satin, you'll notice some very distinct characteristics or effects that these filters provide. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I've shot a feature on film. In fact, I have never shot on film at all. So take this with a grain of salt, but from a purely aesthetic standpoint, from someone with a trained eye, I definitely think that shooting with these diffusion filters will help to get your shots a little bit closer to that filmic look. So if that's the look you're trying to achieve, 
diffusion filters will definitely help you to achieve that look before you even step into color grading. But there's definitely more to diffusion filters than the film look. Depending on which diffusion filter you use, there will be a contained bloom effect in the highlights, otherwise known as a halation. Diffusion filters can also help to take that digital edge off of your shots. It does this by lowering contrast and highlights as well as softening your image. While it does soften certain details, it does maintain sharpness in important areas like the eyes and hair. So I filmed a bunch of test shots with a variety of lenses to give you guys a very good example and comparison of what these filters will do to your footage. It's important to note that these filters do go in stepped strengths from 1 8 all the way up to 5. However, I only had strengths up to 1 for each filter on hand. So I had 1 8 1 quarter, half, and 1 for each black satin and black pro mist. So we've talked about what these diffusion filters do. So now let's take a look at one of my go-to diffusion filters, the Tiffin Black Pro Mist. So as you can see in these test shots I took of Kristen with the Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter art lens, at 1 8 strength, the effects of the Black Pro Mist aren't too noticeable, but you can start to see a very slight softening in the skin but no change in sharpness. Now when we move to a quarter strength, you start to see an increased softening of the skin and even more so at half strength. It's when we switch to a one strength that things start to become much more stylistic, even a little over the top. The entire shot has a very softened, diffused look, especially in the skin. Overall, you're gonna see a decreased contrast throughout the shot as the filter strength increases. However, skin tones remain constant. When we introduce light sources into the shot that we start to see the halation effect or light bloom introduced. Even at an eighth strength you immediately notice the bloom in the highlights. Just look at the headlights of the car and all the street lights. They all have that very noticeable strong halation. As we step it up in strength you're going to notice the halation becomes stronger and stronger becoming almost overwhelming by the time we're at a one strength. In this test shot I have two different light sources. Candlelight and a soft white Philips Hue bulb in the lamp. You can see in the candlelight the nice contained glow that's not too over the top. Now the lampshade, however, seems to contain the halation at least until higher strengths. Even when shooting with a sharp lens like the Sigma 50 to 100, the shot does get very soft once we get to a strength of one. When shooting with a softer lens like this vintage Helios 44, you're gonna notice softening in the highlights, but the details are still retained like you can see here in the whiskey bottle. As you can see here, when we toss an x right color checker into the shot, we do notice that there is a very slight, almost unnoticeable warming of the image, and there is no color shift when you go from no filter to a quarter and on throughout the strengths. So now that we've seen what Black Pro Mist filters would do to your footage, when would you want to use these filters in the first place? Personally, I use the Black Pro Mist filters in several different situations. For example, if I'm trying to have my shots convey a feeling that I want my viewers to experience. So for example, if I'm filming a dream sequence, I would use a very high strength version of the Black Pro Mist to provide that soft, dreamy look. Or on the other hand, if I'm filming female talent and I don't want to provide an over the top stylistic look, I would go with something like a 1 8 or 1 quarter strength just to get the benefit of softening the details in the skin to make the model or talent look a little bit more flattering. Another situation that I would use the filter is if I'm filming a car scene at night and I do want to add that nice bloom to the headlights, I would go with something maybe like a quarter or a half strength. In the end, it's up to you as the DP or filmmaker, whatever your role may be, to decide whether or not you want to go with an over the top stylistic look or a more subtle controlled look with the lower strength filters. Now let's take a look at the Black Satin Diffusion Filter. Black Satin is a newer filter when compared to Black Pro Mist, and oftentimes people do confuse the two. However, there are very distinct differences between Black Pro Mist and Black Satin. 
Both Black Satin and Black Pearl Mist do provide a very noticeable softening effect. However, the difference becomes noticeable when we start to look at the halation or bloom in the highlights. I personally find that the Black Satin filters have a much more understated look. It's not so much as over the top as the Black Pearl Mist filters. Black Satin filters give you a little bit more control over your image, especially when compared to Black Pearl Mist. This makes black satin a much more viable option when all you want to do is soften out the skin of your subject and add a very slight bloom effect. Now, as you can see in these test shots, just like the black pearl mist, there is a softening effect that gets stronger as we increase the filter strength. Now on these shots of Kristen, we were working against the clock, so the sun was beginning to set. So there may be a slight difference in exposure from shot to shot. On the night shots that I filmed with the Sigma 50 to 100 at f2.4, we notice that there is no increase in halation as we step up through the filter strength. If you keep a close eye on the lights to the left of Kristen, you'll notice that the bloom effect is consistent. It may look like the halation increases, but that's due to the changing light sources such as the LED sign to the top right and vehicles coming in and out of shots. Now looking at the still life scene, it may look as though nothing changes as the filter strength is increased. However, if you focus in on the painting on the wall, you will notice a slight softening of detail as the filter strength increases. Even on a softer lens like the Helios 44, which I shot with here, you'll notice that while the black satin filter does soften the shot, it's not as over the top as the Black Promise can be. Details are still maintained as you can see clearly here in the whiskey bottle and cocktail glass. In terms of color shift, we don't see any of that with the Black Satin, as you can see here in the test shot with the X-Rite color checker. Contrast is reduced as we step it up in strength, however, it's not too noticeable until you get to around half or one strength. So when should you use the black satin filter? I would personally use the black satin filter when you want to have ultimate control over your shot and still reap the benefits of the softening effect, especially when you're shooting female talent. So again, the situation that I would personally use black satin over the black pro mist filter is when I want to have more control over my shot. So you've seen the effects of Black Pro Mist, you've seen the effects of Black Satin, now which filter do you go with? Let's say you have a budget for only one set of diffusion filters, or for that matter, let's say you have only the budget for one filter period. Let's take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of the Black Pro Mist versus the Black Satin. Hopefully this will help you guys decide which filter that you should go with. You can immediately see the difference between Black Pro Mist and Black Satin, even at just 1 8th strength. Black Pearl Mist does seem to reduce contrast more so than Black Satin, and there does seem to be a slight retention in sharpness, especially in her complexion. Something I want you guys to keep in mind here is that I kept the grade the same from shot to shot. The differences that you do see between each shot is due to the changes in the filter strength. As we start to increase the filter strength, you may notice that the Black Pro Mist is significantly softer than Black Satin, making it much more stylistic, especially at the strength of one. In our controlled lighting shots, the results are pretty much the same. Do take notice of the reduction in contrast across the entire shot on the Black Pro Mist shots, while the Black Satin shots do retain a little bit more contrast. All right, so there you have it. That is my very non-scientific comparison of Black Pro Mist versus Black Satin filters. So you should definitely give both these filters a shot and see how you can implement them into your work to take your shots to the next level by giving them a more distinct and stylistic look. If you'd like to see more videos on filters and more comparisons, let me know in the comments section below. And if you'd like to pick up these filters and try them for yourself, you could do so by going down in the description and hitting the link for lensrentals.com. Or you could purchase them outright via the affiliate links in the description below. 
Whether you rent them or buy them, I definitely appreciate you guys. When you use those affiliate links, you're helping to support this channel and helping me to keep producing content. Before I go, I want to invite you guys to the Driven Films Discord channel. If you don't know what Discord is, it is a chat platform that I use to interact with all of my viewers and fellow filmmakers. We always hang out, talk shop, we talk about random stuff. It's a great place to hang out, so we'd love to have you. The link to the Discord channel is in the description below. And as always, guys, do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, please hit that like button. If you didn't like this video and you found it to be absolutely rubbish, I promise I'll try harder next time. Also, please consider subscribing. Tap the bell icon next to the subscription button so you can get notified of when I launch my next video. Until next time, take care.